Hello, my name is Becca and I measured exactly how many hours it took me to learn French. I did this over the course of exactly one year and I calculated, wrote down exactly down to the minute how much time I spent doing all kinds of French studying. So if you're looking to find out how long it might take you to learn French or really any other language, um, this is the video that you should be watching because I really don't think many people measure it down to the very minute. I'm just gonna go through and tell you exactly how many hours of studying I did, how much time it took me, what the studying types were, and hopefully this will be helpful if you're interested in learning French or you're trying to assess how long it might take you to learn another language. I also think it's just kind of interesting. So I decided to do an experiment. So this is what I did. Essentially, I wrote down every single minute of French study that I did. This is the type of calendar that I was keeping. I don't know, is this the, okay, we'll show you the first one. This is my learning French calendar. So on every single day, I would say, okay, first day I studied for an hour and five minutes. And then I wrote down exactly how many minutes I did. I did 50 minutes of Rosetta Stone and I did one Duolingo module, which was about 15 minutes. And then I did that. I did that for an entire year. So I can look. So in, for example, my 23rd week here, I spent... 26 minutes watching YouTube videos in French and 17 minutes of vocab. And then that was 43 minutes total. And I wrote that down and I measured them all up. So I have a lot of data, they're all analog. And I, before making this video, have gone through and sort of like figured out some of the trends and stuff like that. So here are the statistics. In one year, I studied for 229 hours and 34 minutes of French. That adds up to an average of four hours and 24 minutes and 53 seconds per week for those 52 weeks and an average of 37 minutes and 44 seconds per day. My study was fairly consistent in terms of the amount of time that I did throughout the entire year. I did take one or two weeks off uh, like during my winter break because I was a college student at the time. I didn't study at all uh, for like two weeks, um, but then I picked it right back up. Um, the majority of this was self-study. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about like what I was doing, but mostly it was self-studying. A few things to know about this. Basically what I did is I counted up every single hour that I spent interacting and engaging with French. So that could be anything from vocab, grammar, doing things like Duolingo and Rosetta Stone, attending French class, which I started doing about halfway through the year. It also includes things like watching Netflix and YouTube videos in French, uh, all kinds of things like that. The only caveat is that if I was watching something in French but I was using English subtitles, I did not count that for its entirety. I only counted a fraction of that because it kind of felt like cheating because to be honest, I didn't really feel like I was learning that much French when I was doing that. But if I watched TV or YouTube or a documentary or something, in French with French subtitles or with no subtitles, I counted it for the full amount because then I was really having to use my language learning brain during that time. So I was doing Rosetta Stone throughout the like majority of this. I have a video all about that if you're interested. So in order to get about three quarters of the way through Rosetta Stone, it took me uh, a total of 64 hours and 57 minutes. I'm not completely done yet, but you can extrapolate from that that it should take me approximately like 21 to 22 more hours to finish the entirety of Rosetta Stone, which would make it a total of about 85 hours um, of just Rosetta Stone study to get through the entire program. Um, and I didn't, I never skipped absolutely anything. So if you're interested in that, that's like a good amount of time, but it's not so crazy. And you really learn a lot from doing that. Um, so continuing, um, the other major parts of what I did, so Rosetta Stone was the most amount of time that I spent on any amount of French studying, but I did a lot of other things. So in terms of classes, I, in college, needed to take some electives. So I figured, well, if I'm already studying French on my own, I might as well take classes and get class credit for it. So I did, I took two semesters of French as well. So in that, uh, in my like American college curriculum or whatever 
French hours. I did 47 hours total of class time. I actually felt like taking classes sort of slowed down my learning. I was way, way, way more efficient when I was doing um, self-study. Like I always learned more when I was studying grammar on my own or something like that or watching TV. Like truly, I actually understand what people mean when they say like language classes are not as good as just trying to learn the language because you have to really want to learn the language. When you do that, you're gonna learn more than when you're just like sitting in class sort of passively listening to a professor conjugate verbs in front of you or like listening to your like classmates like low key like not be very good at French, so. Um. And then I did individual grammar study a lot on my own to supplement both my class learning and when I was doing Rosetta Stone because the truth is things like Rosetta Stone and Duolingo really do sort of require um, additional grammatical learning even if you're already sort of familiar with the grammar system which I was because I spoke Spanish which is quite similar to French's grammar system there was still a lot I had to learn so I spent 41 hours and 35 minutes doing just grammar and then the other types of things I did were like things like watching or like I, sometimes I would read Wikipedia articles, sometimes I would copy Wikipedia articles. Uh, a lot of the time I would just sort of like browse the internet in French, all kinds of things like that. I also counted. So I literally measured every single minute that I spent doing French. So right now, as I speak to you today, I am not perfect at French. At this moment right now, I think it's probably fair to say that I could test at maybe a B1 level. I say that without actually having taken a test, but I have taken B1 tests in other languages. And so I feel like I have like a pretty good idea of like when you're at this level. Basically what that means is I can have basic conversations. I can understand what people are saying often. I can sort of discuss a wide variety of subjects, but not quite fluent. So. If you've ever been interested in learning a language or sat down and wondered how long is it going to take me to learn XYZ language, you probably have googled how long does it take to learn this language. And if you've done that, chances are you may have encountered the US Department of State's language rankings. Basically the rankings that say these are the languages that for a native English speaker it takes the least amount of time to learn. The website will tell you it takes the least amount of time to learn languages like Spanish, Italian, Romanian, and also languages such as Danish, Swedish, Dutch, languages that basically are very similar to English then it kind of gets a little harder. It's a little bit harder and it takes a few more hours to learn French and to learn German. And then it keeps going and going and going to learn Russian and eventually to learn Arabic and then, and Chinese and languages like that. And finally, the crowning jewel of the languages, the major world languages that take the absolute longest number of hours for English speakers to learn, Japanese. But, I'd always seen this list. You know, I majored in linguistics, I speak a few languages, I've studied many, many languages, some of which I do not speak so well. Um, and I often would Google around and I would look at this language ranking to the point where I literally have it memorized. And I would see, oh, it would take this many hours. And then you see, okay, it takes this many hours. Say you're studying full time, it would take you a few months or this or whatever. I always do these calculations. Basically, the U.S. Department of State, and, which is, by the way, the source for usually when you see something that's like, how long it takes to learn a language, says that it takes 750 hours to learn French for a native English speaker. I have done 229 hours and 34 minutes, which means I am slightly less than one third of the way through that amount of hours that they say it takes to achieve professional working proficiency, which I was actually really surprised when I looked back because I hadn't actually looked at the numbers since I began all of this. Because to be honest, I feel like I am closer than a third of the way to professional working proficiency. I am not there yet. That's like the US government's level three, which is if you're familiar with like the European framework um, for like learning languages, that's, that's like approximately equal to a C1 level. And as you probably know, basically that means you're fluent. Like you're not native or totally native-like, but you're basically fluent. I personally feel that I'm more than a third of the way there. I'm not there, but I would say I'm maybe halfway there. So I don't know, maybe for me in this case, it'll take a little less time. I don't know, maybe I'll never even achieve it, we'll see. Um, I am leaving for Europe tonight. Um, right now I'm in the DC area, which is where I grew up, but I'm gonna be uh, 
catching a flight. I'm flying to London uh, tonight and like into tomorrow morning and then I'm going to Spain where I'm sure I'll make some videos uh, speaking Spanish or like talking about Spanish in Spain. Um, and then after that, I think I'm gonna go to Switzerland slash France. So I'll definitely get to use my French then, um, which is gonna be very exciting and I'll definitely make some videos about that as well. So yeah, if you're interested, it takes about 229 hours to reach approximately a B1 level for speaking French. Caveat, I'm a native English speaker, I speak Spanish, so probably if you don't have that same background um, or, and you don't speak other languages that are similar to French, maybe it'll take you a bit longer, but that's where I'm at. So <laughs> thank you for watching. Um, yeah, I am about to go be traveling, so if you're interested in seeing my travels and seeing me speak different languages abroad, I'm sure I'll also be speaking languages that I don't even speak. Like, I will, I'm going to Greece and Turkey, I will certainly attempt to speak those languages even though I have not studied them yet. Um, yeah, follow me and bye! <laughs> also, um, I just wanted to add, I already finished recording the video, but if you have ever learned a language and you know like about how long it took you to learn the language, I would be very, very curious to know because I want to know if like my experiences are similar to others. So if you have an idea of like the amount of months or days or years or, or hours, if you know it, like maybe drop a comment or something or find me on Instagram and let me know because I'm very curious. Thank you. <laughs>